Hey y'all, I really hope you enjoyed our reading of the Telltale Heart yesterday. If you have not yet watched yesterday's um, Telltale Heart reading, stop what you're doing, go back to yesterday's student work and check out that video. Um, before you can move on with anything in the future, you're going to want to have seen that. So today I just briefly want to do a really fast um, look at the suspense that Poe creates in a really unique way in the Telltale Heart. This will be really quick. So really fast, a lot of people ask, hey, what the heck was with Poe? Who writes a story about a guy that goes crazy and chops up a guy because of his eye and then gives himself away to the police? Well, Edgar Allan Poe. So I wanted to show you guys his background. Edgar Allan Poe, who lived from 1809 to 1849, so wasn't that old when he died, he was born in Boston to parents who were traveling actors. Orphaned by the time he was only three, he moved to Virginia, where friends of his family raised him. As a young man, Poe worked as a journalist while writing the stories and poems that would eventually earn him the title, Father of the Modern Mystery. After his young wife died, Poe fell into despair. He passed away only two years later. His dark and sometimes horrifying works perhaps mirror, perhaps mirror the darkness and sadness of his own short life. So if you look at some of his other works, um, they can be very, very dark. He wrote about the Raven that says Nevermore, if you've heard about that one, and uh, we'll talk about some more next week. So really fast, let's go ahead and take a look at how Poe creates suspense in the Telltale Heart. Let me move my video out of the way for you guys, sorry. Maybe, yeah, there we go, okay. Um, all right, so how does he create suspense? So every single one of these five ways are some main ways that he creates suspense. So again, a reminder, suspense is that feeling of tension that we get when we're kind of expecting something to happen. Could be something good, but it's usually something that we're like dreading. So there's this tension, this feeling of like, what's about to happen next? So the way Poe actually creates suspense in the Telltale Heart um, is gonna be through using vivid sensory language. So he likes to use a lot of things that the narrator is seeing, hearing, um, can touch, like that, that he can feel and that he can smell. So one of the things the narrator is constantly describing that he sees is that vulture eye. He doesn't just describe it as like, you know, a creepy blue eye. He talks about the thin film that covers it, um, that it's cobwebby looking. Um, he talks constantly about what he hears, whether he's hearing nothing or he's hearing the beating of the old man's heart in the dark bedroom when they both know they're staring at each other in silence. He also talks a lot about the sense of feeling. Um, he talks about the hellish tattoo of his heart. So I don't know if you guys know how tattoos are, you know, typically given, but it's with a, re a repetitive motion of a needle. Nowadays we have tattoo guns that do that repetitive motion. Um, but back in the day when Poe was writing this, the other person would be like making those multiple like um, poking motions. So when he says the hellish tattoo of the heart, he's saying it's this really creepy, like it feels like this like stabbing, um, beating feeling. So he can actually feel the old man's heart beating inside of himself, which is really creepy. Um, he also uses a technique called foreshadowing. Um, this is a this is one that's particularly well done, and you're going to see in the video clip you're about to watch just um, how amazing it's done in your animated film. Um, foreshadowing happens at the very beginning when the narrator who says, I don't know what you're talking about. I am not mad. I am perfectly sane. In fact, let me tell you a story about how calmly I went about everything. And after you read this story, you will understand how calm and sane I am. Of course, you know, by the time we finish the story, um, our narrator is very clearly not okay uh, and is quite clearly insane. Um, but when he starts by talking about how, you know, how sane he is, let him just tell you how sane he is. And uh, he can hear all things. And if he was insane, could he hear things in heaven and hell? Well, yeah, but he doesn't know that, right? So there's some foreshadowing that something is not right with our narrator. Then he just comes right out and says in the first like minute, um, that basically he's going to have to kill the old man. So the rest of the story is happening and we know how it's going to end. We know he's going to kill the old man. We're just waiting. So because of that foreshadowing, we're building this tension of what we know is going to come. 
Um, the point of view is also really different in this, right? Usually the narrator, the person that's telling the story is someone that you can trust, you can rely on. Our narrator is constantly telling us how sane he is and how there's no way a person who wasn't in his right mind could calmly, carefully spend an entire hour sticking his head through the doorway and then just watch the old man in his bed. Um, so the narrator thinks he's perfectly calm and is trying to prove that to us uh, and saying, and uh, <laughs> we know something very else. This is something, sorry, something else very different. We in fact know that by the end of the story, the old man is not the monster, is not the scary thing. It's not about his eye at all. Actually, the scary part of our story is the narrator. Our narrator is the murderer, is the crazy, insane murderer on the loose, right? Um, so the fact that we realize that we are really not in the eyes of somebody that is uh, going about things very well, uh, we know that things aren't going to turn out well. The last two are really short. Um, the conflict, so that's between the old man and our guy because of the foreshadowing and we know that he's going to kill the old man. Uh, we know that the conflict that's coming is going to probably be pretty gruesome um, and we're looking forward to that and that creates that tension and suspense. For mood and tone, it's constant. Most of it shows up in that sensory language um, as he as he describes um taking care of the old man, watching the old man, creaking, slowly opening the door, slowly opening the latch of the lantern. We can hear it. Um, we can hear the silence even, and even feel that silence when they're staring at each other through the darkness before he shines the lantern on the old man's eye. Um, so the mood and tone is mostly done through the language and it's beautiful. All right, so that's a wrap. Uh, hope you guys enjoy the animated clip that's coming up next. Have fun.